hosting this session. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session of the fellowship. We are going to go through with the coach Maina, but before that, we shall uh, have the national anthem, the first answer in Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukai na udugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Coach Maina, you are welcome for this session. We have enjoyed all the other sessions and we are looking forward to this session today. Um, I, 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 we, are, we are very grateful. So Karibu and you can go ahead. This is uh, the 19th of November uh, and we are going towards the end of our fellowship training. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Today, um, I'm going to be the moderator today, and I'm Patricia Ukech, uh, mediator Patricia Ukech, and I do master classes for um, Wasiliana Hub. All of you are welcome. Are Thank you? you very much. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can see my screen. Not yet. Can you, can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Eh. Why? Even now, not yet? Not yet. I have, I have loaded the, sc the screen and uh, it's not coming through. I'm wondering why it will not show. much and uh, I, I hope now we are together. I'm sorry, no technical issues. You see now this uh, uh, knowledge of uh, digital, it's not for our age, it's for the younger age. <laughs> <laughs> but we are bulldozing ourselves into it. Uh, we want to get into this space and uh, we learn step by step. Mm -hmm. Lucky now I've got a PA who normally make them happen when I am not able to navigate. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I good morning everyone. I apologize for that uh, hitch, but uh, we are sorted out now and we can begin. Today's topic is about emotional intelligence. So far, we have covered the four pillars of wellness. We started with uh, physical health, then we came to mental health. Then we rolled on to financial health. Then we finished with emotional wellness. So we've done those four, but we have got another great topic here called EQ or EI, emotional intelligence. I would want to understand from you so that you can roll together. What is your understanding of emotional intelligence? And what is the difference between emotional intelligence and emotional wellness? Because some words, they are very close. So I want to get a feedback on the chat box so that I can know how to roll with you. In this space of our training or speaking, the first level is first to know your audience. If you don't know what your audience want to learn, you'll not be able to relate the topic in the right way. So for me to be able to make good use of the time that we have, and I would want also to be advice on the time because before we started, we have uh, gone 30 minutes at gone. So are we ending at uh, the top of the hour or at, uh, after one hour? So I'd like to be advised so that I'm able to get going. So Patricia, you can get me the feedback coming through on the chat box to know at least what the expectations are and the understanding is of this point so that I know how to flow with it. Karibu. We, we will end at 11.30, is that okay with you? 
No, it's already 11.30. 12.30, sorry. 12 30. Okay. Yeah. 12.30 is okay. It's okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, give, me the uh, give me the feedback. What have the members said about uh, emotional wellness and uh, emotional intelligence? Patricia? Uh, I'm I'm waiting. I'm I'm waiting for everybody to put something. Can somebody put um, a remark? Nothing so far. The five chats are not about responding to my question. Okay. EQ the ability to perceive and deal with emotions adequately. Um. It's self awareness. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Mimi. Yeah, those are the comments. OK, thank you very much. Uh, for those who have not interacted with me, for a bit of introduction. Uh, I am a practicing, trained, and certified professional coach. I'm accredited to ICF. I'm also a practicing, trained, and certified mediator and I focus on commercial dispute. I have a lot of experience in business. That is where I major in. So even disputes that I work on to transform them to friendship are in the area of commercial disputes. Either family, business, either inheritance, or any area where it is a commercial nature. I am an entrepreneurship trainer. I am an major investor, and I'm also a venture capitalist. One of my companies called Azima Ventures Capital. We invest in people's businesses. So anyone who has a business idea that they want to grow, but they could be lacking access to finances, have no worry. So I'm also a business consultant and investment advisor. I am a Pan-Africanist. In 2014, I formed FABA for Africa by Africans to help Africans to grow instruments of production, to produce what we consume and export the surplus, not to be going to China and India and Pakistan to import what we use. I am also a member of Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Mentors, and I'm a judge. The people who apply to Tony Elumelu Foundation, which is the biggest charity organization supporting business in Africa, I am one of their judges. So we analyze what people have brought to ask for financing and we recommend and also mentor them so that they can grow successful businesses. Very sad that most of the businesses in this country owned by Africans, when the owners pass on, they follow them to the grave. So that is one area that personally I'm very passionate about helping so that we can have legacy businesses that outlive their owners. So this is a briefly part of my, uh, some of my competencies. Uh, I advise on transaction, with transaction advising. I hope you know what that one means, succession planning. I am a thought leader in financial intelligence and I, I'm invited quite often as a conference speaker. I do keynote address. I'm a corporate trainer. I'm a holistic wellness coach. I champion preventive health. And I'm the CEO currently of Azima Wellness Consultants, one of the companies that I run. I am a mountaineer. I love hiking. And I have done all the big mountains in Africa from Kilimanjaro, Kenya, Ruenzori, I've done hiking in a Swiss Alps. I have done in American Rockies. The only mountain that I have not done is Everest. And it's only because of COVID that has delayed. Otherwise, I'll do that and I finish with hiking. I am a founder of several companies, and these are some of the companies that I'm running currently. So this is a kind of a by background, and that's why I major my mediation in a commercial disputes. That area I've been in for 35 years now, in fact, 36 now, because now we're in November, uh, 36 years now, and I have accumulated a lot of experiences 
which I decided not to take to the grave. I will share, empty myself and die empty. So all these are some of the businesses we are doing currently and one foundation. So Karibu Nisana, we roll today with the emotional intelligence. What is emotional intelligence? That is a key question. I want to start with understanding the whole person, sizing the whole person. We are made of three parts. Let's give it three parts. So we have got the IQ, intelligence quotient, the emotional quotient, and the personality. And I hope we are able to understand that quickly. I know most of you are lawyers, so you are people who have done most of these things and you normally test people in these areas. So I'm just restating what most of us are aware of. If you are not aware of them, you can always go to the chat box and ask a question I can explain further. When we have taken care of the three dimensions of a human being, we'll start to begin to understand the people who will be calling us for mediation. There are two parties always in a mediation. Because there's no disputes with one person. There are two people involved, or two groups of people, or two communities of people. So wherever there is a mediation case, there are six different factors at play, six dimensions. And that's why it becomes very complex. Because each person have their own level of IQ, they have their own level of EQ, and they have got, most likely they have got different personalities. So how do you navigate this? And why is it difficult to get this happening? We spend most of our time at the theta stage. And what is theta stage? It is when our subconscious programming takes place. And it is between the time you are born and seven years. This is the time that the brain is being formed. The way God made a human being to operate is that our eyes are the cameras. We see and think and interpret life in pictures, not in words, not in words. So we think and see life in pictures. Whatever the eyes see, they take a picture and send it to the brain and store it there. So any other time you see that image, it is taken to the brain, then it is compared. It's a comparison that is done in the brain to see if it's familiar. And a good example is that uh, there are times you go somewhere, you see a face of, a, of somebody, you try to remember, where did I see this one? Who is this? You cannot recall exactly, but you can see that it's familiar, but you cannot recall the name. So what is happening that your mind is trying to search for a similar image so that you can be able to connect it to identify. So what happens that between the time a child is born up to seven years, that's the time the person is formed. And behavioral scientists posit that we spend 95% of our life in that program. Question. And because the majority here are ladies, who is with our children at that age? And I want you to go to the chat box and let's be very honest with ourselves, especially for us professionals, who is the one who is informing the life of our children at that stage? And 95% of their life will be in the impressions that are being created in their mind at that age. Update 101. We spend most of our time in schools, academic school, that develops our IQ. The part of IQ. But the big thing is, your IQ, your level of IQ is something that you are born with. It is not land. And you can agree with me that even when we're in school, those people who are bright, 
there were some very sharp kids from primary. They continue that way. They are very good in uh, learning, quick learning. They grasp things very quickly and they remember them very quickly, very well. So that is a gift. How in Guinea, Tunasukumu watu, we put a lot of effort. Some don't even need to go back and revise what they have learned. That is a gift that you are born with. But our system of education puts so much emphasis in developing the IQ, part of the human dimension. So most of the training that are done or have been done before CBC came in were more geared towards developing IQ. What is the role of IQ in human life? We'll be coming to that, but in the next level now after IQ, we go to the personality. So what is your personality type? I hope there's nobody today who is in this call who does not understand their personality type. Is there anyone who does not understand their personality type? And personality are divided to you are either extroverted or introverted. Then extroverts are two. We have got choleric and we have sanguines. Then the intro. Intro is inside. Extra is outgoing. The, ex, the introverts are melan melancholic and phlegmatics. It is important that you understand yourself where you belong here because what career you choose, what space you choose to belong in will be determined more by your personality type. It's very bad that uh, we are not taught about this and it is critical, very, very critical. We need to know how we are wired. And this is the next most important thing. Your personality can never be changed. It can be improved, but not changed. So you need to know if you are a choleric. Who is a choleric here? Can I see who is a choleric? We are excitable, egocentric, exhibitionist, impulsive, and histrionic. They're very active people. So if you know your personality, you'll be able to know which are the areas that you can go to. Here you can see now the kind of roles that you play, what you can become is dependent on what personality you have. And you are born with it. You don't learn personality. You can improve your personality, but you cannot change. So for Phlegmatics, they are very good in uh, the roles of diplomats. They become accountants. They become good teachers. They become good technicians. Where do mediators fall? Who are good mediators? Does it come to you naturally? Or are you forcing yourself into it? How did you become a mediator? Did you choose to learn mediation after having done careful analysis of your personality type, or you just got in because somebody mentioned to you that there is some a career here which is called mediation. I read through the challenges that you're having in mediation, and I could tell that there's some mismatch. Some people will do much more input to become good in mediation than others. Why? Your personality is playing a role in how good you can become in that space of mediation. So you need to understand which part of you you cannot change that is playing a role in the career that you have chosen, in the space that you are in, and what should you do? The part of improvement, what we call personal development, personal development, what, what are you developing anyway? When you engage in personal development, what are you developing? 
We talk of CPD points, continuous personal development points. What are you developing? What area of the three are you developing? The programs that you get into, what are they designed to improve on? It is important that all of us, we continuously invest in developing ourselves, but don't develop what you have not first identified. First clarify, clarify what God sent you this way to do. What is your life's work? Because all of us, all of us have a reason why God sent us this way. Whoever makes a product, whoever comes up with anything, he does not make the thing then start thinking what it will do. First and foremost, you have a need. Then you design something that will meet that need. So when God sent you this way, he had an assignment for you. Are you in your space assigned by God or you are just a passenger trying to fit into areas which is not within what you are made to deliver? Invest in yourself. Why are you investing in yourself? To develop, sharpen your skills, your capabilities the assets that God gave you to be able to deliver to the best service to humanity. Service to man is service to God. We do this for God. So service to man is service to God. So it is very important that we begin by understanding you so that uh, like, uh, like I'm saying here, like IQ personality is something you are born with. Extroverts have their unique natural predisposition. And so do introverts. I will not ask you the difference between that, but I know we are aware of that. Here is the point. When we are small children, Patricia, have, I, have, uh, have anyone given a response who's is influencing our children at the early age between, let's say, one year and seven years? Yes, there is uh, one, somebody says mostly the nannies and teachers, and another one is the mothers and teachers. Thank you. For us middle class, it is not our mothers. Our mothers are at work. So we are left with nannies. And what is the characteristics of these nannies? In this area, in this, in this side of the world, the house health are people who have got very little IQ. Those who didn't perform well are the ones who are left with our children. Even those who go to baby school, the, <laughs> the caregivers who are recruited in those early levels are also people of low IQ. So you, you go and you leave your child with somebody who have got very low IQ to influence them, to shape who they will become. This is serious. This is serious. And ladies, I want you to think, those who are still in the childbearing age, who are you leaving your child with to shape their future? Homeschooling is becoming popular now, and especially now that you have got work from home. I am liking this. One of the things I celebrate about COVID is that it showed us we can work from home. You must work is not something, some place you go to. You can do the work from wherever you are. You can still be able to become productive from where you are. You don't go to. I don't go to town. I'm doing this from my house. And this is very nice. So my wife, you know, we don't have small children now. Like you now, our daughter now, you see, our son, instead of leaving their young children to the house help who have got low IQ, 
Let them be shaped by people who have got higher IQ. During the time we were coming up ourselves, our parents programmed us the best way they knew how. There are things they did very well, like we are very well behaved. We, did, we didn't ban schools. Uh, the last six weeks, so many schools have got have banned. I was in Kakamega High School and my school was banned. 1932 is when the school was built. It's never been banned. But last month it was banned. It was put into flames by the boys. Whose boys is our children? Who brought them up? House helps. Ah, can you see the results? 95% of our life as grown-ups, we spend it in what came into our, our, nini, our mind impression at the age of one to seven years. By that time, your memory space is taken care of. And all what you'll be doing, the eyes send them, get the message, send it to the eyes. It tries to look at something that is familiar. We come with a blank piece of cloth. Just imagine a blank piece of cloth. Then you are coming with the brushes and you are putting impression, putting impression on it. So once you put impression, ikija kuisha maneno. Or like a computer. You save information, save information, pop in a jar. So you cannot download from your memory. Computer memory, what you have received. Uh -huh. Information is sent there first, then it comes in. So your work now is to reprogram yourself deliberately because the person who programmed your mind to be who you are today, either you are a house help who was employed by your parents or your parents who did not know better. Like me, I was born and brought up in the rural areas. So my mom was bringing up her sons to that level. But the world is different today. What is personal development? You have to be conscious and know that what you have was put to you by people who meant very well. They had the best intention for you. And they gave you what they had because they don't have given you what they didn't have. With the technological world that we are in, you have to consistently upgrade. And that's why you are now in the Zoom sessions we did used to have them last year, but now that COVID has come, has shifted us into the space where we are doing this online, and it's very good. Uh, this particular program, you have had many trainers from different countries who have given us very good training, very good exposure because of technology. Zoom is a game changer. So things are happening. So make sure that you continuously upgrade yourself so that you can meet today's world. Now, there are two things, three things which are very close when you come to understanding the person. And the reason why as mediators, we need to get this into our fingertips. We have emotions and we have feelings. They are not the same, but they are very close. Where does emotions end and where does feelings start? Then we have moods. Moods are different from emotions and from feelings. So where, how do they overlap? Because they contribute. In any conflict, wherever you are being invited to mediate a blip or a conflict, it is these three which are playing part. And you need to be very good in this space to navigate this space. What are the assets that you require to have to aid you to be able to deliver? I don't know how many people are practicing uh, any uh, mediators. I would want to get a confirmation how many are practicing. Because it's one thing. That's why when I'm introducing myself and say I am a trained and practicing. Because you could be trained, but you're not practicing. I know even lawyers, you have got many who are not uh, practicing, but they are lawyers. They have done law, uh, they, but they're not practicing in different sectors. So how many are practicing mediation, active practicing? 
I would like to know that because as I get into this difference and bringing out what it is that you be going to, because we've been learning for uh, four months, so we're now getting to finish. We are going to get into the world. We are going into a very dicey situation in this country. Next year is election year. It is promising to be heated. Already the heat is on. So a lot of our conflicts are about to come in. Politics is very confrontational, very, very aggressive. It is emotional. It is not logical. So many things are going to happen. Relationships are going to be broken. More people will be requiring to get somebody who understand mediation. So what are the, uh, the assets that will help you in this area of mediation? Emotions and feelings. Personal development is investing to max your strengths. You improve on your strengths. We, we normally say sharpening the axe. You have the axe, so you're sharpening it. And improve on your weaknesses. We all have got both strengths and weaknesses. So personal development is that you are strengthening. You don't change yourself from who you are, but you make yourself better. God put a lot of assets in each one of us, but they exist in raw form. They are raw. So you need to develop them so that you can be able to deploy them to serve. They help you. They are aids, they are guides, but are you utilizing them the right way? So how does it begin? Self-awareness. Do you know yourself? Knowing yourself will begin in the process. If you don't know you, that means you will not be able to deliver. Self-awareness is very key. How do you become self-aware? By understanding your emotions. Emotions come from the mind. And it is normally a response to a stimuli. Feelings, on the other side, it comes from a reaction to the emotions. I hope this is clear. Emotions come from the mind as a response to a stimuli. What are stimuli and how do they get into the mind? Feelings, on the other hand, they come from a reaction to emotions. Emotions are inborn. Yes, inborn. And we all have them. Feelings are personal. Emotions, fear. Everybody has some fear. No, honestly, what matters is your level of overcoming fear. Overcoming fear. How do you deal with a fearful situation? How do you navigate through? We all have it, but our thresholds are not the same. As a mediator, when you're being invited to go and mediate situations, I like using Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan was sent to Nairobi when it was burning. Some people wouldn't come to Nairobi at such a time. Even we who belong here were not going to town, but him, he came and come to in Serena Hotel. Yes, you must be strong enough to be able to navigate mediation. It is only the level of the emotions that are at play that differs because the time that two parties cannot agree themselves and they're inviting a outsider to come and mediate the differences, that means they are not, the emotions have been aroused. This is our work. And for any mediator, this is space is very, very important to manage 
Feelings are personal and they vary from individual to individual. Emotions are automatic. They just come, emotions. But feelings are shaped by temperament and experiences. There are much more. All this information is on Google. You can Google it and learn more, but please pay more attention to it because it has a lot of basis that you need to get into to understand our role as a mediator. Let's jump into emotional intelligence proper. There are four skills that together make up emotional intelligence, four. And they are divided into two. Just like we have got four different personality types. Then when you come to emotional intelligence, we have got four skills which are key. Divided into two, personal competence. And it begins with self-awareness. You become self-aware, you know yourself. Because even when you're being called for mediation, there are some cases you should say no. Learn how to say no. Because we are peacemakers. We want to transform conflicts into friendships. We want to help people to be able to live and let's live. Tolerance. There are cases you can be called and say, ah, is it as an anaya? You let them go to another person, or you suggest to them somebody who can take up their case. Self awareness. So, what will make you to say no? Then self management. Because one is first is awareness, then self management. Those ones are about yourself because it will start with you, then you go to the other parties. Because how do you go and mediate other people's issues and you have not been able to make, take care of yours in the same area? Uh -uh. Honestly, if you have, let's say, family, you are married and your wedding, your, your relationship at home is uh, on the rocks, you're not even seeing eye to eye with your husband, and another, and another couple has a problem that they call you and you say that you want to take up that case and you're not able to manage yours and you won't take that case to be the mediator in a similar situation, I think that is not being honest. You're in business, your business itself, you can't manage yours. You can't manage your own money, but you are getting into <laughs> mediation between other people who have got similar problems. Ah, uh, uh, Start with yourself. So self-awareness and self-management. Are you managing your own affairs? Before you go and manage other people's affairs. Social competence. What is social competence? It begins with social awareness, interaction within people, and relationship management. And this the relationship management is where now conflict comes in because I had mentioned that and we all know there's no conflict without having different people. There's different players who come together and they cannot be able to manage. So there is already friction. There's friction. Anytime there is a blip, there's a friction. If not well managed, it is going to morph into a conflict. And that's where we have been given the competencies that are able to bring this party together and they shake hand and they live happily ever after. Or they have a way that they can tolerate each other because it's just giving space. Selfishness is the one that is bringing most of the conflicts. Greed and also mentality, you know, scarcity mentality. Like where I am in, in commercial disputes, when I look at them, most cases is just because of scarcity mentality. People think that the other one is going to take away what belongs to them. They don't see the multiplicity of the resources. This world has enough for everyone and even those who are going to come. But everything in this world is not enough for one person's greed. Greed is negative. Greed is negative. You can never have enough if you are in the greedy situation. 
So the bottom two competencies, the social competencies, are about how you relate with other people. And that is our role. Mediators, what are we doing? We are going out to other people. But the point here is mediation is unlike some skills. You do not go publicizing yourself. What happens that is people who come to you and request you to be to mediate in their dispute. You cannot be in hot pursuit of marketing yourself to be the mediator. It is a situation that people reach out to you. So what do you do to be able to qualify, to be able to attract people who need your services to come to you? You work on yourself. You work on yourself to attract them to you. You don't pursue, but you work on yourself to attract. And this is very good space for ladies. Ladies in the house, I salute you. You know, ladies by nature, the way you are brought up, uh, you always work on yourself. You, you make yourself very attractive. Why? Uh, to attract the man. You look good. Eh? So the way ladies are wired, they are wired to work on themselves. And that's why you are outliving men. Men are dying very early. Men die early. Look at Kenyatta, our first president. He died and he left his wife, Mama Gena. She's still alive and enjoying Kenya. My dad died in 1978, no, 1998, 1998, my dad. My mom is still alive and she's still enjoying the fruits of having brought up children. My dad passed on and many others. I'm sure even if you look around where you are, you'll see more men have left this world and left their ladies to enjoy for a longer duration. So ladies in the house, this space of mediation is yours. You just need to understand what informs mediation and how you can go about it. I found that most of you are having problems on how to market yourself. Yes, people don't understand mediation. It is a new concept in this part. You are the one who is supposed to let them know about it. It is our role. We are introducing it. It's going to become popular as we go along. There's always a beginning to everything. Example I like giving is M-Pesa. We didn't know we needed M-Pesa, by the way. And I thank Vodafone for having come up with that idea of M-Pesa and beginning it in Kenya. Now we are leading the world. Imagine how life has become simple. Very, very simple. Buying and selling. Like now we are going digital. The thing that is making it happen is our ability to be able to pass on payment through the mobile phone. And we all have them now. Almost everybody has a phone in this country. We are running our life through the mobile phone. We didn't know we needed them. Before we used to have those phones and Meza Nyumbani. Then somebody thought that, uh, why not have a mobile phone that wherever you are, you can be reached. Only police used to have walkie talkies. Remember those days? I'm sure some of you here are in that age where you can remember that time. But somebody thought, why not make a phone that you can be got wherever you are? Today, you cannot live without a mobile phone. If you lose one, You'll change your budget to buy a phone because you can't do without. Then another person came and thought, okay, why not make a phone? Not only just for calling, but make a smartphone that can do many other things, multiplicity of things. The way they were able to bring those and made us know that we need them is the way we are supposed to do with mediation because people perish for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. People perish for lack of knowledge. So you are the one who know about mediation and its role. You are supposed to educate people to know what mediation can, can do. So a good mediator should be able to consciously choose how to relate with other people. 
That means you overcome the emotions. Emotions should not be the one that determining how you relate with people. You make a choice, a logical choice. And that's where tolerance comes in, accommodation, accommodation. So if you don't have self-competences, I can assure you, you are going to get it very difficult to be able to bring people who are already having friction to agree together. What helps you to get to that? Emotional intelligence. You should have high EQ or EQ is very important. So what informs, what influence emotional intelligence? We had mentioned about emotions, feelings and moods. So the question is, what is the difference between these three? Go to the chat box and give me the answers to the three. What is the difference between emotions, feelings and moods? And if you don't get this clearly, you'll be having hiccups as you grow your mediation career. There's so much need for mediation in this country. So much, so much work that need to be done. But where are the doers? Going for the training to become a mediator is not enough. It's just the beginning, just the beginning. How are you rolling out your career in mediation? That is what is critical. Some people will succeed, others will not. Do you want to be the one that just went and got the training and you spend your time and money and got the competencies, then you sat on them? Or the one who learned and went out to use those skills that you learned in mediation and help people and you became a sought after mediator? This is critical now. The choice is yours. What should you do? And how should you do it so that you become a useful member of society in the area of mediation? Reduce the tension, the friction among the people. You have been trained, you have the competencies, but you must use them. They don't just work because you have them. You must make them work. Execution is a formula. Is a winning formula. So how do we do this? So what is the difference between the three? Uh, Patricia, do you have any responses? Not yet, not yet. I, I have 16 strong membership. Why am I not communicating? Patricia, can you tell me, am I communicating or I'm not? Maybe I have lost. Yeah, you're communicating very well. Uh, it's okay. coming through very clearly. Okay. Um, so maybe Thank fellows, you. we can communicate on the chat. Thank you. So feedback, feedback, feedback is important. So, and thank you very much, Patricia, for confirming that. You know, sometimes I could be here and I'm talking to myself. So I would want us to see because we are all mediators. I'm a mediator and I'm a practicing mediator. I have an advantage because I'm also a coach. And more than that, I have done a lot in uh, emotional intelligence. So I understand humanity. As a wellness trainer, I understand human in and out. So it helps me a lot. So I would want you also to get the skills that will make you successful in this space. Look at this. Here I want everybody to grab something. Basically, we have got five, only five basic emotions. Happiness, being sad, being angry, fear, and shame. But the intensity, intensity differs. You can see all these names that are explaining this particular feeling, they differ in intensity. And we use all these names to describe how we are feeling. For a mediator, for a mediator, this is critical because you need to know at what level are the disputant in? And how do you navigate them so that at the end of it all, you transform that particular blip or conflict? 
Kofi Annan was able to broker peace in Kenya in 2008. And since then, we are okay. And you can see the way these people have been uh, shifting from even alliances from one to the other, from one side to the other. You see, uh, this is good. But I like Kofi Annan, and the, that is the best example that I've always given about mediation. Because I was here, I was in Nairobi. I know how things were in 2007, December, after voting, early 2008, when things were horrible, we didn't know what to do. Most of us did not even have money that we could run away from Kenya. We didn't know where to take our families. We were in Nairobi and we could not get supplies. But a guy comes in, a Ghanaian, not even a Kenyan. He comes in, comes in Serena. He had the competencies to bring two warring parties together. He did. And even when they were, what called Nyeta, he even suspended it and actually met the, 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 the principles, meeting them one by one, then coming together and then bring them together. And they signed the agreement. Would you want to be that kind of a person? You see the country, the whole country, and Kenya, there are so many other countries, non Kenyans who depend on Kenya. So his input played a very big role. This is a call that we have. This is the call that we have. So what is it that makes you terrified, horrified, scared stiff, petrified, fearful, panicky, frantic, and shocked? What is it? Well, this is very common, by the way. Fear, the emotion of fear, hey, Hello, it paralyzes people. I can tell the people who had sent their challenges onto the chat, most of them were not able to market. What paralyzes you? What makes you not able to market? And by marketing, you don't just go marketing them to give you a job, make them aware. Because many people are saying in my area, is charity in the house, in uh, Meru, people are not aware of mediation, alternative dispute resolution. How will they know? How will they start coming to you to seek for that? It's you to go and tell it to them, but you must conquer the emotion of fear. Fear has made people, many people to remain playing very small, very, very small. They paralyzes people from taking action, even when you know you're very good in it. And this is very big deterrent, especially for ladies. You have to work much harder on yourself to be able to overcome this, ladies. So please work on yourself. So all this, you should master them. And you see, we have got the high level. We have got the medium and the low. You are terrified or apprehensive. You are horrified or you are frightened. You can also be cautious or nervous, timid, anxious. What is anxiety? This is the space for emotional intelligence. So I would want us to get very quickly and uh, we wrap it up. What is the difference between emotions and feelings? That one, it is there on Google. You can just Google this. I just direct you and guide you into things that you need to master for you to be able to launch your mediation career. I'm saying there's so much, so much that need to be done, but the doers are not there. The skills and competencies that you have, please unleash them to serve humanity. Feelings and moods. What are moods, by the way? What are moods? What's the difference between moods and feelings? And here's a big one. Where do moods originate from? And this one give me an answer. I'm not going to continue if there's no answer for this, Patricia. Where do moods come from? Patricia, help me. Okay, let, let me just read one that uh, was put here before. Mm -hmm. It said moods can be dictated by the environment. Mm -hmm. Environment. <laughs> No answer is wrong, by the way. All answers are okay. We just expand them. 
Any other? Uh, yes. Um, no, no. Okay. Feelings? Uh, Feelings the, the, situation, uh, the situations around, around us. Uh, and, okay. And, yes. Okay, let me, let me help you. This is a bit uh, uh, critical. Sometimes you assume things that you know them, but the moment you are told to explain them, they become a bit challenging. Uh, experience and uh, practice is better. We said moods and feelings start in the brain. There are two brains. There's a limbic brain where feelings are expressed. Then we have got the neofrontal cortex where logical thinking happens. So both feelings and emotions start from the brain. But when we come to moods, moods are different. Moods are different. So moods come from the stomach. So let's let's see let's see let's see what happens. Eh? Uh, see now, mood is made in the gut. Mood is made in the gut, and this is critical. We always talk about my my gut feelings. My gut feeling is telling me that uh, I should not do it. I think I, you know, I, I've been told to do this by my gut feeling. Eh? That's a mood. And why the gut? There is a constant bidirectional communication between the brain and the GI tract. The microbes in the gut communicate with the cognitive and emotional centers of the brain. 70% of neurotransmitters like serotonin are made in the gut then sent to the brain via the vagus nerve. You can now see why we began. When we began these talks, we began with a physiological wellness, physically the way we are made. Yes, neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters. You see now some of them are made in the stomach. And that's why I say my gut feelings. My gut feelings is what you think, by the way. You don't think with your stomach. You think with your brain, not your stomach. But the communication between them is very close. Very. And that's why sometimes you might be shaken by something you fear, then you find yourself diarrhea. -ing. You diarrhea. So what is the connection between the diarrhea -ing and the, that fear that is uh, in the mind? Nutrition. Nutrition create moods. So this is very important. So I would want you to be able to get this into understanding how the mind and the stomach operates and you'll be able to get to understand this fear. Where is it generated in the brain and experienced in several forms? Let me ask, is fear good or bad? Is there a positive fear? Let me hear from you. Excitement. What is the difference between excitement and happiness? Excitement and happiness. People confuse these two also. As a mediator, you cannot confuse these things because you need to actually tell the difference. Excitement and happiness. What is the difference? Ah. Anger, anger. What causes anger? What is it? All these are going. All these <laughs> you are going to go through them when you are doing mediation. Mm -hmm. By the time they are calling you, already they have experienced this, and you'll be going to be seeing them raw. And as a mediator, you need to be very strong because they can affect you. You must learn how to practice detachment. Detachment. Don't go to mediate between parties and then you make their problems your own. That is another problem. It will take you down. And it is expensive, by the way. Yes, it will treat. Very expensive. 
So ensure that you safeguard yourself from getting into people's disputes and making them your own. Afraid. Uh -huh. These are things that we need shaming. Shame and its effect. As a mediator, you must make sure that you don't allow the process to go to a point where some people will be shamed. Election, winner takes all. The winner takes all. Whoever win now, the other ones, still like now 2017. After the election, we even had two swearing in because election is that uh, the one who wins takes everything. And this is what happens in our courts. Lawyers in the house, yeah, the ones who are going to become magistrates and judges next. This level of uh, winner takes all, that the other party is like, they don't matter. That is not mediation. There are many ways of shaming people. Even body shaming. You've got to be very, very careful when you have emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. Empathy. Empathy. So there are many, many things that you need to learn and own them so that you are able to get into a space where you will be in a good relationship with the people you are mediating. And you should not take sides as a mediator. What helps you to be able to have both parties feeling happy with you? Because you have to be accepted by both parties. Remember before Kofi Annan came, the current president of South Africa had been sent here, Serail, and he was rejected by one side of the disputants. They refused him. He had landed in Nairobi. They said, ah, no, no, no. You see? So you must be acceptable. What makes this happen? emotional intelligence. Happiness is not excitement. Happiness and excitement are different. Happiness is not a goal. It is a byproduct of a life well lived. That is Elena Roosevelt is the one who gave us that important point. So now, the body communicates through hormones. Hormones. You need to know what dopamine does and what serotonin does. Eh? You need to know what endorphins do. Oxytocin. If you are uh, going to be a successful mediator, you must understand the person. What is the difference between excitement and happiness? That is homework for you. These things that you need to know and you need to learn so that you can grow your coaching career, no, mediation career. I'm sorry, uh, there's a very close relationship between coaching and mediation, very, very close. So, and because I'm both, sometimes you'll get the words overlapping. Excuse me for that, because both of them lead to the same. Moods, feelings, and emotions are controlled by hormones. And we have dopamine, they are the reward chemicals or hormones, endorphins, they are the painkillers. They're very, very important because people will have the pain. You need to know how to get them to trigger the release of endorphins, oxytocin, very good for socializing, serotonin, stabilizers, they stabilize. All these are very important asanas that you need to have for you to do good mediation. Mediation is an emotional process for sure. Let's agree. More emotional. A good mediator should practice how to trigger a release of endorphins and exotocin. How do you do this? If you don't understand, and this is the, why emotional intelligence is very, very important. For you to lead two disputants into an amicable agreement and shake hands, because that is the success of a mediation process. For you to transform a dispute into a good relationship, healthy relationship, you must be very, very good in your way of relating with people. And you must start with understanding you, 
then you understand the people, both parties. You need to study them differently. Then you know what can come as the uniting factor. You are the one who's going to lead them to agree. You should strive to be in a state, you yourself, that release dopamine and serotonin. Because it starts with you. You cannot be doing it for other people and you have not done it for yourself. So it always starts there. So what is the role of IQ in mediation? Intelligence. Sometimes you think that the, sub, the person who is very sharp in, med, in a IQ is the one who is a good mediator. No. No. People with high levels of IQ outperforms those with average IQ just 20% of the times. I repeat, people with very high levels of IQ, those geniuses, and you know, you are in school with geniuses. Where are they today? In mass, most geniuses don't succeed in life. They were very sharp in, school, in class or in a certain area, but they do not do very good in life. While people with average, average IQ outperforms those with high IQ a whole 70% of the time. That is very telling. And here it is now. 85% of your financial success, Chapa, we did financial wellness is due to your personality. We did personality type. The ability to communicate. Communicate. In this training, you have been doing communication, very important. Oral communication is very important. How do you mediate? Through communication. You must equip yourself with the high skills of communication. And your communication message must be chosen in the right way to negotiate. You're negotiating between two parties to bring them to an agreement and you are the leader. You lead them. Haha, -ha, this is a major one. Shockingly, only 15% is due to technical knowledge. So if you are a lawyer, if you are a teacher, if you are a preacher, if you are a doctor, if you are an engineer, in fact, your technical skills will only play 15%. But what will bring the results? Is your personality, very important, work on that. Your ability to communicate. Because even if you are very good and you're not able to communicate in the right way, you not bring people to agree. Negotiate between the parties as a mediator and take the leading role. Very, very important. Now, this one, emotional content. EQ is so critical to success that it accounts for 58% of performance in all types of jobs. And I repeat, all types of jobs. So a good mediator as well should have very high EQ. Big question. As mediators, have you tested your EQ? When last did you test your EQ? Do you know your level of EQ? This is the truth. Only 36% of the people tested are able to accurately identify their emotions as they happen. People are very ignorant about EQ. Why? Because it's not being taught. So we need to go into that space. And why is EQ so important to mediation? In mediation, EQ, you can see this tree. Look at this, this tree. Emotional intelligence is a foundational skill in mediation. It's very critical. Teamwork, social skill, communication, change tolerance, empathy, stress, anger management. Trust is key, trust. You must, if they don't trust the process, I'm telling you, you're not going to get them coming in. And you have to be assertive where it matters. If Kofi Annan was not assertive, the politicians, oh, what are the people who had been elected in Chuse? Ruto was leading one group on one side, then Mother Karua, the other side on the other side. Huh? <laughs> 
they were all more for combat. So you must be assertive. When you are the one leading a mediation process, you must hold people accountable, accountability. And you have to be flexible. Flexibility is very key. Do you have that? So in the behavior patterns, you need to know where you are and who, what kind of a person you are. There are people who are decisive, decisive when there's a problem. How do you tend to approach problems and make decisions? Are you demanding? Interactive. Are you the kind of a person who is interactive? How do you tend to interact with other people and share your opinion across? Those people are called gregarious. Gregariousness is very important in mediation. Because if you don't know how to interact, how will you bring these two parties into an agreement? Stabilizing, stabilizing. How do you tend to pace things to your environment? Are you patient or are you impatient? How do you allow people to talk themselves? Because some people just need to be given time to speak. Give them the ears. Active listening. Active listening is a very important skill that helps in mediation. Hear everyone out. Are you cautious? Do you follow procedures? Are you tied by procedures like laws, like in the court? Because the, the magistrate and the judges, then they judge the cases. Even sometimes you can even feel for them. They can see what the situation is like. If it was not for those laws, they would have given a different judgment. But they must do it according to the structures. Preferences to establish protocols, standards. You've got to be cautious. Which quality do you have and do you employ in your mediation process? Taking control of your entire wellness. You must sleep to distress. You must avoid stressing yourself so much. Don't allow what you have heard from the people you are mediating get into your nerves. It is going to bring you down. Eat well. We discuss the kind of food that is good for your health. Hormones, you have discussed them here now, and they are very, very important. So one of the best thing, feelings in one of the best feelings in the world is finally knowing that you took a step in the right direction. A step towards the future where everything that you never thought was possible is possible. So for you who have taken mediation and you want to grow in that space, but you're getting to the market and the market is not ready for you, it's not welcoming, usikufe moyo, Keep to it because the need is there. Learn how to market yourself. Work with those people who are already doing mediation so that you can be able to get the skills. Mediation is a skill and the skill is developed over time. So I would like to say, begin to live as though your prayers to become a good mediator are already answered. Yes, because they are. And Thank you very much. I want to take it back to my co-hosts. If there are any questions or comments, I'm ready to take them up. And I hope it was worth your time. EQ, your take home. Thank you very much. Maybe just one question and then I will read um, a comment or two before we close. You've talked about the EQ. What is the message from the position of EQ being expressed by the mediator in that mediator, mediation session? What is the message you would be expressing? Can you ask it again in a more detailed way? Because... <laughs> oh, okay, okay. The, the, the question is, eh? I was just, I just gave a, a, a short brief that you have told us about emotional, the EQ. Mm -hmm. And what is the message from the position of EQ being expressed by the mediator? You see, uh, EQ, EQ is holistic. You know, it has so many components and you have seen the four of them. Mm -hmm. So cannot have one answer to it because it depends on situation, situational analysis. 
-hmm. You need to be self-aware yourself because you are called in when there's a dispute. You are not a mediator if there's no dispute or a blip. Some, some things are not going well. So what is your role? It is not yours. It is them who have got problems. You come in. You're in between them. You want to broker peace between these two parties. So what are the qualities that will help you to be able to do that? What will be able to do that? That's where EQ comes in. You understand you mm -hmm. and you manage you. Then you should be able to have the social skill that you also understand this part and this other part. Then you know what is the dividing line. In most cases are emotions or feelings. Emotions or feelings and perceptions. Perceptions. Mm -hmm. Like now politics, what our politicians do, they create some imaginary enemy and they go and tell their people that, oh, Kemodo Geke. You see, that's what they, you see like now I'm looking at it and I'm laughing because I come from Central, eh, Mount Kenya. Mm. People used to be told how bad Raila is and they had bought into that. Now, <laughs> he's a buddy, no, he's a friend now and they're agreeing again. So it mm. is those people who are coming to tell them about eh, Kemodo Geke that were creating that. You are the mediator. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do first and foremost is yourself. And I say you don't pursue, you attract. Be it first. Mm. Be it first. Then you can share it. Radiate. Radiate that confidence. So if you don't understand human beings and their nature and how they are made and wearing and where emotions come from, what are feelings, what are moods, I can assure you, you are going to have it very rough. Because these people already, their nerves, their nerves have been rolled. They are not composed. They're in conflict. So what do you do? You need to have very high IQ, no e EQ, not IQ, EQ, emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, so mm -hmm. that you can be able to bring them to a situation that they cool, they relax. And that's why hormones are coming in. So it's a holistic process. And that's why EQ is difficult, because it is not one. They work together as a cocktail to bring in that level that you have brought those two parties who are disputants into an agreement and you transform the dispute, the conflict. I hope I have answered you. I hope that person who asked the question is answered, but I think you've answered it very well. I will read um, a few comments on the challenges that the mediators are having. Uh, one. Mediator says, my security as a mediator when the parties fail to come to an agreement and hostility flares, suspicion and being intimidated of favorism, failure to bring parties to agree to settle their disputes. Uh, there's a second one. I face challenges like geographical diversity and vastness of the terrains, cultural barriers like some parents of teenagers uh, pregnant girl not interested in the process, citing uh, tradition, traditions, and lastly, lack of awareness about mediation. This needs need of sensitization. Mm. So there, there are a number of comments, but let me just read those two. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I just want to remind us that. Um, we are now going towards the end of our fifth month. We are going towards graduation. We are, should be very excited. And um, the aim was to shift mediators from focus on externalities, technical capacity, process and training related challenges towards looking into focus on and to invest in the internalities, self-awareness, and self-development to become a conflict transformational mediator. And my hope is that we are getting there at this time. Um, we, have, we have this weekend with a lot of uh, activities and I'll mention some of them. We had yesterday the masterclass on forgiveness. We have this summit now at, uh, we had a, a clubhouse at 10. We have this summit at now. And then we have 7 p.m. with the all with the Northwest Conference where all the speakers are going to be. And then we have uh, Emily Martin speaking to us at 8 p.m. We also have tomorrow fellows inaugural uh, 
Ignatian lecture from 10 to 1. So all links sent to our fellowship account. Look out and join us tomorrow. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you to Coach Maina. Such a big thank you uh, for the last five months. And on behalf of Wasiliana Hub, we really want to convey um, a hearty thanks to you. We, we sincerely thank you for the way you have selflessly given yourself. You have poured out yourself to us who have been able to listen to you. We are truly grateful for that. Um, we, we want to say, like you say, we pray that your prayers have been answered, but we also pray that you will be filled up again for another time. You have given to us as you've emptied yourself, may you be filled up again so that you can give to others. And uh, we particularly have learned about transformation and we are carrying that into the world that we are going to be mediators out there looking to transform what has been going on before. Thank you, thank you so, so much for being with us. And um, we pray for a good, uh, a good rest after the five months. May you totally be, be blessed. Uh, as we come towards the end of uh, our session this afternoon, um, I want to once again remind you that it has been posted on the chat, the activities that are going to be there. We shall end with the national anthem once again. And this, this was uh, the lead to the summit, the sum, part of the summit, and we are holding it today on a Friday and hoping that you will all join us tomorrow. I will end with the national anthem in Kiswahili, the first stanza. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe nangao, haki iwe nangao, na mlizi, na tukai na udugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Thank you everyone for joining us. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you.